Hey everyone, it's Connor here, and welcome back to a very interesting, very unusual case. What's unusual about this case is there's no infection, there's no huge amount of wax, there's no debris of concern per se. But what's interesting is the shape and architecture of the ear canal. Now, uh, and the, the eardrum looks lovely by the way, so there's no middle ear problems or anything like that. And uh, the eardrum is, is clearly seen back there. It's that kind of shiny, bluey, grey disc of skin, which I'll mark with an arrow. What's actually nice about this eardrum is that it's kind of semi-translucent. So, uh, you know, you can see the arm of the incus hanging down. And uh, also that there's that kind of line, sort of pale white line going across. And that's probably the corda tympani, which is a nerve that runs on the back side of the, uh, across the back side of the eardrum. And that supplies taste to the front two thirds of the tongue. So eardrum's fantastic, but see this kind of, you know, wavy kind of furrowed edge of the, of the ear canal? That's what caught my eye first. I thought, oh, that's unusual. And then what's more unusual is that the ear canal generally is widened and has this very obvious depression, this very obvious crater that's, um, that is not seen very often. In fact, I hardly ever see it. And uh, you may be thinking, well, you know, you're, you're probably reading too much into this. It's probably just the, the you know, natural anatomy of the patient, which is what I thought at first. And I thought, well, I'm probably just reading too much into this. But the other ear is completely different. You know, the other ear is normal. Um, so here you can see the very obvious, you know, downward depression, almost like somebody scooped out some of the bone. Um, and uh, so I'm fairly sure that this is the, the result of bone remodeling. And it's consistent with the history. So this patient, um, as a child, remembers, doesn't remember too much, but remembers that um, there were repeat infections, lots and lots of ear infections, constantly in front of doctors, constantly getting hearing tests. And as I said, she doesn't remember too much about the details, but she knows that there was no surgery. So that's something. But um, so, and, and what I'm doing here is when I saw this, I thought, okay, this might be, um, this might be interesting. I wonder how deep the crater goes. And this patient presented to me because uh, she felt like there was always a weird pressure in the ear, that things were getting trapped in there, like water. And uh, occasionally there was the odd, the odd infection. So my theory is that if I dig out all this debris, that will uh, alleviate some of those symptoms and stop uh, these infections from recurring so often, right? Because this, this, this kind of pit of dead skin is probably a nice little breeding ground for bacteria, particularly if it gets wet. So that's the aim of today, is to remove all this debris. But, um, you, you know, you may be thinking, well, okay, that this bony portion of the ear canal, why is it scooped out like this? What, what is bone remodeling? And we've touched on this briefly when I've done videos about keratosis obturans, which is like a plug of dead skin residing in the ear canal. But bone remodeling is actually a very normal process, right? So it, well, it's normal for the, the rest of your skeleton. It's less normal in the ear, to be honest. But um, it, it's your, your body's way or your skeleton's way of dealing with stresses and dealing with changes. So uh, you have special cells that, that line your bone just underneath the periosteum called osteoblasts and they make bone, they secrete the bony matrix. And you have osteoclasts which break down bone and these two cells are very specialized and they're, they're controlled by hormones basically. And uh, you know you may want you know, uh, denser bone, and you may want an activation of your osteoblasts if you're weightlifting or doing some kind of specific exercise. And you may want to activate your osteoclasts if you're low on calcium, for example. But in this particular case, something has caused the bone in the ear to form this very, this very distinctive pit, which is unhelpful because debris will collect in that pit. And then, you know, it's, it's a, as I said, it's a nice little kind of scooped out place for dead skin and water and bacteria to hide. And uh, just incidentally, as I, as I took out this big piece of debris, the patient felt this wonderful sense of, of alleviation of pressure. So um, she's now much, much happier. But when it comes to bone remodeling, the fact that there's been lots of infections, which she uh, experienced as a child, um, suggests to me that this kind of scooping out this pit here is probably the result of a, you know, various infections which have um, either caused a, you know, various plugs or, or a plug of dead skin to form, uh, causing immense pressure on the ear canal, um, 
or that, the, that this portion of the bone has eroded. I think that's probably less likely. And when we talk about bone erosion, we talk about, you know, infection in the bone, which is osteomyelitis, or we talk about poor blood supply to the bone. I, I, I rather suspect that's not the case. But when you see, um, when you have a, a sort of dead skin plug, which can, which can happen when you get infection, um, and this dead skin plug grows and grows and swells, especially if they're putting in drops, the parents are putting in drops, that can lead to an enlargement of the bony portion of the ear canal. And the way that happens is when there's pressure on bone, sustained pressure, you might get micro cracks or micro fissures in the bone. And your osteoblasts, which are the bones that make, which are the cells that make bone, will detect these micro cracks and secrete a few different uh, chemicals. And the chemicals, one of them is called rank L, which stands for receptor activator, nuclear kappa beta ligand, I think. And the other one is macrophage colonating stimulator, I think, something like that. But essentially these, these, uh, these cytokines, these chemicals that the osteoblasts secrete will cause white blood cells, which are macrophages, to clump together to make these rather large cells, these osteoclasts, and the osteoclasts will essentially break down the bone and dissolve the bone. And, uh, and then when, once they're kind of finished doing that, the osteoblasts will then secrete another uh, hormone which will then bind to the rank L um, uh, receptor on the osteoclasts and stop them from working. So it's, it's a very complicated process, the, the, the process of bone remodeling. Um, but uh, you know, it's ex extremely complicated and has been researched extensively. But we now know that osteoclasts are actually not made from osteoblasts, but they're made up of lots of macrophages clumping together. And that's why osteoclasts look big and they have several nuclei. So they don't just have one nucleus like you'd expect in a normal cell. They can have anything from you typically five to 20, but you know, scientists have seen osteoclasts with over a hundred Nuclei, nuclei. So it's a very interesting um, case, this one. But uh, I thought I'd share that with you because you don't really see this that often. Um, and uh, it was, you know, when you do see bone remodeling, it's not totally obvious that much because you, you know, you tend to second guess yourself and think, oh, am I just reading too much into this? But uh, in this particular case, I don't think I was. So that's a nice case of bone remodeling. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you on the next video.